There's a there's a Joe Rogan video called "Be the Superhero" or something of your own story, and one of my coaches, Sean Whalen, listens or watches that video every single morning. Mm-hmm. And and I love that aspect of being the superhero of your story, but it starts with having your own story, and I think that's like the biggest encouragement to anyone is it's it's your story, and and you can create it today. Uh, that's that's been the fascinating thing that I've seen in, in my life and, and in so many others is that. Just because the narrative of that story has been one way for 5, 10, 20, 30 years doesn't mean that that story can't change tomorrow. Um, but you have to be the superhero of mm-hmm. that story for it to change. Um, and literally, this guy watches that video every single morning. He's yeah. like, that's just the mentality. I, every single thing I do, every, every place that I go, every person I talk to, I think to myself, what would the superhero version of me do in this scenario? Mm-hmm. And it changes the story completely when you, when you start putting that context around everything you saw the daily bread here's the new recipe you can expect to see more transparency Five thousand six figure earners is success to me giving the best of me my living legacy we just hopped in the car we're going to pick up a friend from the airport and uh so in this episode we're talking about like constantly growing and and, uh, and self-development and just trying to level up um, constantly. And the big thing people always say is they, that they don't have time. But it's so funny because we just hopped in the car and this was blaring, the oh, MF CEO so project with Danny Fasella. No, and it's what I was listening to on the way to work today. Uh, and you don't realize those little windows of time, like even if you don't have a, a big commute, a big long commute, like that five, 10 minute window on your way to work where you can just have knowledge coming in versus just like what, music, news, stuff like that. Um, you can you can constantly be learning. And so I, that's kind of my mode of operation is just constant, 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 constant education. Um, always listening to something, watching something, uh, maybe that's my ADD and I have to keep my brain occupied. Uh, but what I can tell you is when I went from that period of time from being broke to a certain level of success and then another level of success and another level of success, that there was an insane amount of personal development and personal growth that transpired over that period of time. Um, there was a period of time where nothing, like all I listened to, uh, or watched was like Gary Vaynerchuk and the Andy Frisellas of the world and the, the old school stuff um, like Brian Tracy and Zig Ziglar and I still know little Tony Robbins and um, people that you know younger people don't even know about like Harvey McKay and and people like Napoleon Hill and, and stuff like that it's just constantly trying to feed your brain uh, with positive growing stretching information and uh, it's incredible what what that compounding effect will turn into over time. You said that the reason why a lot of entrepreneurs that are veterans do so well is because of the lessons that they learn in between service and success. Mm-hmm. And that's extremely interesting. Um, it's actually pretty deep, but it's extremely interesting because the easy way to have said that is a lot of entrepreneurs that are veterans are successful because of what they learn in the military or their experiences in the military, or the leadership aspects in the military, right? and all the stuff that was while they were in service. But what you said is, no, it's actually the lessons that they learned about themselves right. after they got out of the service yep. and tried to re, um, what, do you, what do you call it? Reintegrate. Re- reintegrate mm-hmm. into, into civilian life. Yep. And then not only reintegrate, then do something completely different. Mm-hmm. And the lessons that they learn which are more personal skills yep. and the lessons really through failure mm-hmm. and trial and error and determination that it took to basically try something completely new. Yeah. And that's a very interesting, that's very interesting. I never looked at it from that perspective. It was, it's definitely, it felt like a recreation of self. Like, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying that the things I learned in the military didn't aid in some way, but sure. I would, I would, if I had to put a number on it, it'd be 80, yeah. 20, like 20% leadership skills and how to tough through hard situations. Mm-hmm. But that's, again, that's all a part of a system yeah. that you learned that you have to then forget basically, mm-hmm. because then it becomes this like, okay, now I need to learn the basics of like sales yeah. and the basics of 
um, product knowledge and whatever industry you're in, mm-hmm. and then building, and then scaling, and then protecting. Yeah. And it's all these things that it can be very intimidating. So combined with that feeling of like aloneness, mm-hmm. there is this feeling of like, hey, I'm on my own now. Um, it can either be- it's or, that, either, or that people don't understand what I'm going through. That or... too. It's sink or swim. It really yeah. is. I was scrolling through Instagram. <laughs> I saw a picture from Tyler and I saw it was Greenville and I was like, oh snap, I'm in Greenville. And I reached out, Tyler responded. We had a, a sit down and we were gonna, I thought we were gonna talk for 30 minutes. We ended up talking for like three, four yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then um, I mentioned Modern Man and he said, yeah, let's do it. So kind of feeling that energy, realizing where other people are, putting yourself out there is the start of kind of almost consuming what you want to create. Now when you're ready to create, what is it men should create? What do we create? Yeah. To me, it's, it's creating the life, it's creating a lifestyle. And, and for me, that lifestyle is just about doing what you want to do when you want to do it and on your terms. And that, that for some people like that, and that for even within myself, that means sometimes 16 hour days of work. And then I know there'll be different periods in my life where that will mean no work or minimal work. But that being on my terms, you know, Mm -hmm. like creating a life lifestyle that I'm in charge of, that, that someone is not telling me or I'm not being forced to do something because of all these outside circumstances that I can do what I'm passionate about doing in more importantly, I cannot do what I'm not passionate about doing. It's probably way more important. Um, yeah. Is getting to that point where like, you don't have to do those things that you hate to do, that, 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 that bring negativity in your life, that you, can, that you can eliminate those from your life and that you can focus all your time on, on positive stuff that you want to be working on, that you're passionate about. Like to me, that's the ultimate, ultimate thing I'm trying to create. Um, if and I have one, yeah, and one word of advice is for people like there is no reason to settle for something you're not happy with anymore. There are so many avenues and so way, many ways like, yeah, I mean, when I was in New York, did I make more money. Yeah, a little bit, but I didn't have near the, the personal like, I don't know, freedom, fulfillment. That's the word uh, that I have now, you know, and. Uh, no one should be on anyone else's terms. But, but 95% of people, like the, the toughest question you could ever ask yourself and ever have to answer is what do you want? Yeah. What do you want? And I'll, and I'll take you through a quick scenario. Most people quick know, scenario. The, know yeah. the answer to Well, and they'll, and they'll use phrases that, that aren't real life. So they'll say, I want to be financially free. Got it. What does that look like? What does that mean for you? Um, that means that I'm no longer controlled by debt. Cool. We're getting, we're getting closer. So what does no longer being controlled by debt look like? What does that allow you to do? Well, if I don't have any, if I don't have the debt anymore, then that means that I can, you know, be more free with my time. Awesome. That's another good thing. So what are you doing with that time that you're now free with? And when you finally go down this rabbit hole of why, but why? So what does that mean? So what does that mean? So what does that look like? And then all of a sudden you get to that lifestyle. You're like, I want to be able to pick up my kids from school every day while making a decent living and taking six weeks of vacations every year and visiting my parents that live in North Carolina every other weekend. Like when you get specific to like what you actually want, like by the detail, it's like, oh, it's because you said financially free and I have no idea what that means. Yeah. But you really, that's the life you want. It's almost like the, the pre-programmed answers we've given ourselves. Yeah. And only when we kind of challenge ourselves to ask, but why, but why, mm-hmm. six, seven times is when we run out of those prescribed answers and then we actually have to tap in deeper and think to ourselves, oh yeah, well, why do I really want that? Yeah. And most people don't get to that level. They don't peel the onion back that way. That's a tough thing to do by yourself. Like I didn't, I didn't realize that until I went through that process with a coach and it was 11 hours into the day <laughs> of him asking me why. Yeah. And finally on the 11th hour, he was like, 
Got it. 11 hours, cool. Now we can actually start. But once uh, you get there, then you are truly creating and not consuming. Yeah. <laughs> I'd never had a coach before. And honestly, I never really even thought of that whole process of that whole dynamic of, of, a, of a coaching uh, scenario. Um, the interesting thing is that it took one day, right? You know, I mean, you and I were together for one day, and I think about 11 hours in, I had uh, a pretty big epiphany that made it all worth it. Um, and so for those that don't have a coach or that haven't gone through that process, you know, what would you tell them as they are obviously trying to level up and they're trying to grow, what would you tell them? The, the definition of insanity, and, and I had the same experience you had when I hired my first coach. It was yeah. kind of, you know, making that investment, which is scary, and then having that aha moment going, oh shit, hmm. I know what I don't know. I now see something. But the definition of insanity is banging your head against the wall over and over and over again. And and we continue to do that, not only as entrepreneurs, as CEOs, as, as husbands and fathers thinking that somehow magically if I work harder or grind more, the problem will remedy itself. And then you just create this imbalance. And so to me, it's like knowing that you can just step back, let somebody else come in and take a look at it and say this, 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 and this, and, and, and finding somebody who's been where you are. Hmm. And that's what, what, you know, I feel very confident in is I work with a very specific individual who was where I was or is yeah. doing the things that I was doing that caused me to burn my whole world to the ground. So it's, it's, it's the pride factor of just being able to step back and saying, okay, dude, like help me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That that was probably the biggest decision that I ever made that helped me the most was saying, I don't know. And mm -hmm. and from that point on my life just catapulted. So it's on both sides. So it's, it's, it's knowing what you don't know, but then once you find out, it's it's now being held accountable to it. It's like, well, now that I know, <laughs> yeah. Now, now, now is where the work comes in because now I know. Now I can't use the excuse that I don't know because right. now I know what I don't know, and now it's time where I have to actually hold myself accountable. Uh, but what we've been finding is that that hold myself accountable doesn't really work out that well with most people. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting because. A lot of people say, well, I lack motivation. Now you're motivated. If your house <laughs> caught on fire, you would run out the door. Like you're motivated. Yeah. If, you, if you ran out of money and you were hungry, you would go find a way to get food, to get money. Like we don't lack motivation. What we lack is clarity. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem is that if you're in the woods and you just go in circles trying to find your way out of the woods, why not figure out who has the map, go invest in that map, get that map for yourself and then work your way out of the out of the woods, but we don't do that. Yeah. Again, go back to that definition of insanity saying, well, I'm going to work even harder. I'm like, dude, you're already working 20 hours a day. You can't work 24. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. step back for a second, get clear, find somebody that can help you get a map to actually figure out where you're going. And then you end up getting the result that you're looking for. A, go a good coach that I, I found will ask you a ton of questions. Mm. And, and here's why is because 95%, 99% of what we share, and I was this same way, is bullshit. It's very superficial. And most of the people that we have around us, this is why a coach is so damn important, is you're paying me, you're investing in me to not be your friend and to be that superficial level, but to take you down to levels and, and a depth that you've never been to, right? I envision it as like me kicking you into the deep end of the pool I'm standing there like, I won't let you drown. I've got the life preserver, but at the end of the day, I'm going to, I'm going to force you to swim. And most people won't do that. And so yeah. when you ask further questions and you dive deeper, you ask somebody, what do you want? Well, I want to be free, right? I'm like, well, dude, you could literally walk out right now and shoot somebody. You're free to do whatever the fuck you want. You're free to stay home. You're free to walk down the street. You already have freedom. So what does that mean? Yeah. Well, and then you just kind of run through this process of really diving deep into what people want. Yeah. Um, and it's surprising, it's not really surprising, but it's fascinating to me, and you experienced this with me yeah. here in Salt Lake, that you ask enough questions and you kind of create that space for somebody to really tell you what they want in no place of judgment. It's typically not what they initially set out and started telling you. Yeah. And that's what I love about coaching is, is not only for me having coaches that won't hold me, you know, that will hold me to a deeper standard and will push me into that deep end of the pool to ask deeper questions, but that's what I love about coaching people is, is knowing that like most of what you say is bullshit and mm -hmm. people get offended by that. Like, wait, wait a second. Can you call 
calling me a liar. I'm not saying, I'm, not, I'm saying, no, you're not a liar, but you do lie. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it is creating a space for somebody where they can answer things that truly mean something to them, where you go out to the bar and your buddies ask you how you're doing, what do you want? And you give them superficial shit and they're like, yeah, that sounds great. You know, let's go play darts. And yeah. you never get anywhere, right? That's yeah. the reason coaching is so damn important. And, and those questions, it's not like they're these deep philosophical questions. Usually the question was just why, mm-hmm. why, why? And the, and the first answer was like, uh, because that's what I thought that was supposed to want. Like, that's what I, I mean, isn't that, what I'm, isn't that what I'm supposed to want? Like, I'm supposed to want to be, I'm supposed to want to be a millionaire, right? <laughs> like, how, how, how our programming has served us or not served us. You know, I, I was out in Denver with a client of mine very successful. She owns a wax salon, um, like a beauty salon, and they do about $1.5 million a year. And she came out to see me and, and I'm at, what do you want? Well, I want, you know, the freedom and the money and the thing, da, 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 the whole thing. Well, halfway through the day, she breaks down and starts crying. And I'm like, what's up? She's like, I finally figured out what I want. I said, what is that? She's like, I want a horse. <laughs> well, by me navigating this course with her, it helped her get to the place where she felt safe and saying, when I became an entrepreneur, I followed the rules, which was working 20 hours a day, giving up my personal life, not investing in me. I gained weight. I don't look good. I don't feel good. And she had had horses her whole life. And so she like sold all of her horses because she didn't have time for it because she was supposed to be an entrepreneur, working 20 hours a day. Well, to make a long story short, she goes home, buys a horse, and it's like everything else started to fall into place. That's awesome. Body starts getting into shape. The business starts becoming clear. Her employees notice the change in her and saying she's more pleasant, it's more fun. You know, and, and who would have thought investing in a coach would end up having me buy a horse? <laughs> yeah. That's ultimately what no one had been able to take her down that path and help her get clear on what she, and that's really what she wanted. She yeah. wanted that freedom. She wanted to be able to live her own life, but by the rules of entrepreneurship and following all these people on social media that are like, grind, 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 grind. She got rid of her her life that she loved and moved into this space that she didn't love. And you know, her business is more profitable than ever. They're opening up their second location now. And I attribute that honestly, not to me, but to her truly getting clear on what it is that she wanted and then yeah. going and doing that. That's awesome, man. Well, dude, I appreciate you jumping on and, and in the, uh, in the essence of the hat that you have on right now, you know, I'm incredibly grateful for you and the role that you played in my story. Um, I mean, this logo that's behind me, this lighthouse that's up here. I mean, the transition that I've seen in my own life by the time that we've spent together, man, has been absolutely incredible. And I know that the purpose and the mission that I have now and the focus that I have on accomplishing those things is correct, is directly correlated uh, to the time that you and I spent together, man, I'm in, and I'm forever grateful for that. So you're welcome, man. And, and I and I enjoy more than anything watching you literally create this map and then follow it. I mean, you're yeah. the you've ever been in business. Yep. I see you connecting more with your with your daughter, with your wife. Yep. You know, personal stuff, doing more of you, becoming free. And at the end of the day, it's just sit down, get that map, follow that map, and you end up getting where you want to go and so many people are so resistant to that but it really is that simple mm. um, it's getting out of our own way so dude hats off to you for uh, for doing the work buddy